neighbor, tell your neighbor, you need to be a choir master. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You sang so well. Come on, let's give God a big hand and tell him thank you. He deserves the praise. We're reading Psalms 24, verse 1 to 10. And Psalms 24, verse 1 to 10 is a familiar psalm. I want to read it today as we remind ourselves of the glory of God. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. And verse 2, For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors. That the king of glory may come in. Who is he? This king of glory. The Lord almighty. He is the king of glory. This is God's word and God's people say. Amen. Amen. We may be seated in God's presence. Are you glad to be in God's house? This has been a good, good, good service, and we thank God. Don't neglect to meet together, as is the habit of some. You made a choice to come. You made a choice in the service, and God bless you. Uh, as I welcome those online, I'm especially welcoming Martha. Thank you, Jesus. Martha is online, watching all the way from the United Kingdom. Her sister was graduating, Mary, last, this, this past week. And so on Monday, she traveled. When we were going to Mombasa, she was going to the UK. Hallelujah. And she'll be there, believing that she travels back next Thursday. So I'll be praying for her. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. And she's, a, she's coming especially to be present during the Women of Impact 10th anniversary. And so she told me to remind the women, the 400 women. Uh, this is your moment in time. Uh, do that and the Lord will bless us. I'm telling you it's going to be a great day that Saturday. So ladies, come. We want to prepare for the next decade because we believe that the impact of women is going to rise in great sights. Men, I want you to know that you're men of purpose. If you're sitting next to a man, tell that man you're a man of purpose. Tell that man confidently, you're a man of purpose. That man needs to reply and say, yes, I'm a man of purpose. Okay, so tell that man you're a man of purpose. Did they respond? Now, even though they don't look as if they have a purpose, just tell them <laughs> that looks can deceive. Hello? So, this is also to tell you men, there's a Bible study called Men of Purpose, uh, which Pastor Ambrose wrote. Uh, that as we study the Word of God, we get to know things that we didn't know. Hallelujah. So we celebrate 
on, online, and we say thanks be to God. <clears throat> There's a team going to Israel. They travel to Egypt and then to Israel. They will be led by Pastor, Pastor K, um, who has already, I believe, he left. Uh, he, he went to Egypt. We'll be meeting the, next, the rest of the team. <clears throat> if you're in the house and you're going to Israel, uh, please stand if you're in the service. We already prayed for you. We just want to acknowledge uh, you if you're, if you're here. Maybe you're somewhere else preparing. Uh, but we want to pray that the Lord will bless you. Are you here? Anyone who is in that team? We're going about 30. 30 people. Okay, my sister, you're standing. All right. This is also to, to tell you that every year we get a team around this time to go to Israel. And so, tell your neighbor, you're the next. Uh, tell them by faith, you're the next. Or change it the other way around. Tell them, I am the next. Now, that sounds better. Tell them, I am the next. And if you don't go, it is okay, because I'll go. <laughs> Hello. God bless you, my sister, and all the rest of the team that are going. We say, God bless you big time. God is good. Another thing I wanted to say is the Nairobi Jerusalem Conference Summit comes on Wednesday. And if you have not registered and paid, please register and pay and come. We're going to have three days of an amazing exposure and awareness concerning uh, the interactions and the relationships that we have between Israel and Kenya and Africa. And so may the Lord bless you. Please pray for us. Parklands Baptist Church is hosting and so pray for us that even as we host, we shall do an excellent job. So tell your neighbor, we have many things to do, but this one we must do. Now that passed you. This one you must do. Please come. Uh, I know it is a full day, so if you can even get an hour to come, and maybe you are at work, or you have two hours to come and go, please come. Let us make this place a place where God's people are received. I want to share God's word, and I want us to pray. So shall we pray. Father, we thank you, because you're an amazing God. You're an awesome God. You're a good God. This month, as we talk about the divine invasion, Lord, help us to connect. Help us to understand that this is an awesome blessing. That when you come into our space, awesome things begin to happen. And so in the name of Jesus, as I share your word today, Father, may you invade this sanctuary. May you invade the pavilion. May you invade even those watching us online. And may they experience the love of God today. We thank you for hearing our prayer. And may this word find a place in somebody's heart. Because we have prayed in Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the invasion of God's glory. Last Sunday, when I saw a lot of people come for prayer, I sensed that there is a hunger and a thirst for people to want God to be in their life. And indeed, it is true. And as God comes into your life, God comes not only to be resident doing nothing. He wants to come and do what you could not do. Provide what you could not provide. Lift you up where you could not be lifted. He comes as your friend. He does not come to find out what didn't you do last week. He doesn't come to find out whether you've been reading the Bible or not. He comes to be a father to you. He comes to be your friend. And this, 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 this issue of friend is so important because in the world, we, we are getting to have fewer and fewer friends. It is even worse because in marriages, husbands and wives are not friends. Hello? People get married. They love each other. Fall in love. Honeymoon. Things continue, but they're not friends. Sometimes it is, it is, it is, 
it is um, a heartache to find guys get married on the wedding day and they love each other, there's an amazing reception, and then two weeks later, the gentleman is living with a best mate. Hello? And the lady is living with a best man. And sometimes you wonder, what happened? And sometimes the issue is not the wedding day, the issue is not they didn't fall in love, the issue is that when they were relating, they were not friends. They were not friends. They couldn't open up to one another. They couldn't relate. Laugh at one another. Laugh with each other. Crack jokes. People get married and they put on a, a, an act. You get married as if you have a, this cloth on you that now you are a husband. A guy who was very excited. Two days after the wedding. He can't laugh. Even when the wife tickles him, <laughs> he tells the wife, don't be childish. <laughs> the wife is trying to make this guy laugh. The, guy is trying to make, the lady is trying to make this guy happy. But this guy now has put on a coat telling him, now you are a husband. Husbands do not laugh. Husband do not get excited. You know, have you ever heard <clears throat> this, this saying that if you want to know two people are married and they're in a car, Hallelujah. The husband is driving, the wife is on the phone, and they are, they are not talking to each other. Now, if you want to know that they are not married, you find that they are talking to each other. Hey, things they are. <laughs> now, those ones are not. Now, that should not be. That should not be. Hello. Hallelujah. Friendship. You have to be friends before you get married. And after you get married, you continue being friends. And you know, that's the same thing about salvation. People, they used to, be, they used to enjoy high life. Have you ever had people say, I'm enjoying high life. After I finished enjoying high life, I will then give my life to who? To Jesus. When they give their life to Jesus, from that day, they act as if they, every day they swallow gallons of lemons. And they're not happy. Mm? The guys who used to boogie down in, in clubs. You know, in, in clubs. Now, those were my dancers, those days. Did you ever hear a dance called Kung Fu Fighting? There is a Kung Fu Fighting. Now, those, those were for this, those days. Hello? The young people don't know that. <laughs> then when we got saved... We were like in a life jacket. You know, you know, you know we were in, in this, this jacket. We, we cannot lift up our hands. We cannot laugh. <laughs> now, can you imagine? You've been delivered. You've been saved. You've been, you've been lifted up. You know, and you come and you act before God. And God is saying, come on, cheer up. Get excited. Guys who who support Arsenal and Manchester United are more excited about their teams than people are excited about Jesus Christ in church. Hallelujah. Now, even if you support a team of people who never walk alone, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, I know some of you, if, even though God was losing the other day, you are excited the whole way. Let me tell you this. Out, keep praising, keep exalting Him, because you serve an almighty, awesome God. But I was talking about this thing of friendship, and I'm telling you, God wants you to be your friend. Let me read one or two verses, and then I'll come to this glory, the invasion of God's presence, because I want you to finish this year strong, and I want you to finish this year loving Jesus. Amen. Let me read these verses. These are fantastic verses. The Bible says this. John is talking about the vine. He says, I'm the vine and you're the branches. And he's just talking and talking and talking. Around verse 13, this is what the Bible says. He says, greater love has no one than this. To lay down one's life for one's who? Friends. 
Then he said, you are my friends. He did not say, I would like you to be my friends. He did not say, one of these days, we better be friends. He is saying, you are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants. You're not servants. In his presence, you are his friends. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Sometimes that's what happens between a husband and a wife. None of them knows the other person's business. Even these days of cell phones, I'm telling you. If, if a husband left his phone next to the wife, hello, it would like being in hell. By the way, let me ask as a by the way. Husbands, would you give your wife your phone for the whole day? <laughs> Some are saying it is dangerous because after the day, number one, all the Mpesa money is, is gone. Others, you know, all kinds of things. Let me tell you this. By the way, let me ask the other way around. Wives, would you give your husband your phone? Yeah. <laughs> now, husbands, if your wife said yes, can you tell, give, is that a testimony? Some of you are looking at your wife and you're, are you the same woman that we are talking together? <laughs> are we, are we? But let me tell you this, either way, whether you give your phone or not, whether you do any, remember, be friends. Hallelujah. Because friends can fight, but they can make up. Friends can go away and still come back and forgive one another. That's why we have this phrase, friends for forever. Jesus is saying, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are a friend of God. I am saying you are a friend of God. And if you didn't know that, you are a friend of God anyway. Because he has chosen you. You did not choose him, he chose you, you are his friend. And it is in that kind of atmosphere we want to talk about the invasion of God's glory. And that is why in Psalms 24, the verses that we read, let me go to Psalms 24, verse 7. The Bible says this in verse 7, Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. He goes on to say, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. I want you to know that when he comes in, there are four things that become your inheritance. There are four things that God wants to do in your life. When he comes into your life, when God's glory enters your system, he manifests these four things. He manifests his presence. He manifests his protection. He manifests his purpose. He manifests his power. These four things are also important in our relationships. <coughs> that when we are together, when we are, when we are friends, we share each other's presence. We release protection. We have a purpose. And power is manifested. But let me talk about God and his glory. By the way, the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of what? The glory of God. You see, we fell out of God's glory. Adam fell out of God's glory. 
God's glory is an amazing environment. And that's what I want to talk about. So let me, let me start with his presence. His presence. His presence gives us his glorious environment. Let me tell you this. Everything has been created in its, in its particular environment. The birds have an environment. Which environment is that? The sky, the air. The fish have an environment. Which is that one? The waters. Animals have an environment. That is land. Now, if birds have an environment, which is the sky, fish, the water, animals, the land, where do you think is the environment for human beings? Hello? Where is the environment? Where, should, where do they fit? I'm talking to you. Did I hear anything? Okay, you're still figuring it out. Now, I will tell you. God said to the waters, let there be fish, and waters came. He said to the sky, birds fly, birds showed up. He said to the land, land, let there be animals, and out of the land, animals showed up. When it came to us, what did God say? You see, God had to speak to an environment to get that particular thing out. So when God spoke, Genesis 1.26, this is what God says now about you and me. He says this, Genesis. He says, then God said, let us make mankind. <clears throat> so where did mankind come from? From God. So where is our environment? Exactly, God. And that is why the verse that Pastor Regan read is the fool says in his heart. There is no God. Because that fool who is talking came where? From God. And so your environment is God. And that is why when you are not in God, you are so uncomfortable. That's why when you are not in God, things don't work out. When you are not in Him, you know, <clears throat> you are restless. Let me tell you this. God's environment is glorious. I'm saying God's environment is glorious. And so even as we were praying last week and saying, let God invade your space, we were saying, come into God's environment. Come into this glorious place where God will lift you up. Let me give you an example in the life of Moses. The Bible says this concerning Moses. Exodus 33, the Bible says this, and by the way, in the bulletin I had written Deuteronomy 33, but it's actually Exodus, so make that correction. It's Exodus 33, verse 14. The Bible says this, Moses and God are talking, and the Lord spoke to Moses. The Lord replied, now why, why, what was he replying to? So go to verse 10, let me pick it from verse 10. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshipped each at the entrance to their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses. How? Face to face. As one speaks to a friend. That's why I was talking to you about being a friend of God. You're a friend of God. I'm saying you're a friend of God. And that's why when you're in God's presence, don't start acting strange. Have you ever met a friend of yours and says, Jimmy! I see you, and I come unto thee. Come there for Jimmy. I, as I enter into thy presence, you know, Jimmy will think, there's a place called Madare that brings people like you. You see, Jimmy will not, that's not how you talk to your friend. And many times we have been conditioned to talk to God like that. Heavenly Father, I come into thy presence. And Father, just stay there as I stay here. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God is right next to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you imagine if God would come and shake your hand? Huh? You'd be amazed. 
Bwana asifiwe. Some of you have never shaken my hand. The day you shake my hand, you don't wash it for a few days. Hello? Give me a mic. This one is playing around. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor it's the mic. It's not Ambrose. Check. So, the day you shake my hand, or imagine the other way around. If His Excellency the President showed up <clears throat> and just walked in and then sat next to you. Now, you'd feel different things. <laughs> Number one, you'd feel very uncomfortable. Hello? Because you rarely sit next to people like that. Or let's say someone called sat next to you. But say the president, he comes and sits next to you. <laughs> <coughs> and he says, how are you doing? And say, so, your excellency, I'm fine. And he says, I'm so glad to sit next to you. I'm glad you can sit next to me. Please shake my hand. By the way, here is my card. Anytime you need to call me, call me. Uh, please, in fact, next Wednesday, you can come to State House. How will you feel that day? Number one, you walk around as if that day actually never happened. I can't believe it happened. But a greater one than he is in the house. His name is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he says, ye ancient gates, open up that the King of glory may come in. And he's sitting next to you. His glory is next to you. And he's saying, I know what you're going through. I know what happened to you last night. And I feel for you. And I don't want you to be depressed because I'm going to stand by your side. This thing will not overwhelm you because I will watch over you all the days of your life. This is what the king of kings is talking about. This is the invasion of God's glory into your life. And so God and Moses are talking. The Lord who speak, would speak to Moses, let me read that verse, Exodus 33 verse 11. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people. Now you see, that's how friends talk. Lead these people. But you have not let me know who you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name. And you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. So I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord then speaks to him and he says, hey Moses, my presence will be with you. And I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will, I, how will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? You know, when God shows up in your life, you become a distinct person. You become a person of honor. You become a person of favor. You become a very different a person. Let me tell you this. God's presence is with Ambrose. I'm saying God's presence is with Ambrose. Ambrose is not an ordinary person. Ambrose is an extraordinary person. Why? Because the extra is God. Hallelujah. The ordinary is me. The extra is God. And that's why it, it makes you now, you're not an ordinary Kenyan. Because the extra one is with you. And therefore, you are an extraordinary Kenyan. I am talking to extraordinary Kenyans. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am not just ordinary. There is an extra in me. And therefore, from this day, know me as extraordinary. Hallelujah. So if your name is Jane, you say, I am Jane Extraordinary. If your name is John, you say, I am John Extraordinary. Now you, now you introduce yourself to your neighbor the way I said it. Use your name. 
and see how that feels. Hallelujah. How does it feel? Why? Because God says my presence will be with you. May God's glory touch you. I'm saying may God's glory touch you. You see, that's why it doesn't matter who I meet, whether in government, whether in ambassadors, whoever they are, because I know I'm of a higher caliber. I represent the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the king. And I walk with my head straight up because I know who I am. Now, that doesn't mean I walk around arrogantly because arrogance is not for royalty. Hallelujah. A lion does not apologize for being a lion. Thank you, Jesus. It is a lion. And when it roars, it just reminds you who he has been all the time. So tell your neighbor one more time, I am extraordinary. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May God's presence walk with you this week. May God's presence be with you this month. May you finish this year well. May you finish it strong. That doesn't mean that things will not happen around you that may disturb you. But deep inside you know that you are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. For the king of kings is inside you. Hallelujah. May God's presence invade your situation. May he come through your situation. When you go for an interview, go in, into that interview not as a servant, not, not subservient, not feeling you're nothing. You are everything in Jesus' name. Walk in there with confidence. Even if you don't know the answers, act as if you know them. Hallelujah. God will give you wisdom. God will give you understanding. These people will wonder, by the way, where are you from? You will say, I am from heaven assembled in Africa and deployed in this organization. Come on, somebody better say glory. Huh? Let me say it one more time. Somebody says, where are you from? Don't say I'm from this place or that place. Just say I'm from heaven assembled in Africa, deployed into this organization. They will give you a job right there. One time a guy told me, by the way, Pastor Ambrose, I went for this interview. And the first thing they asked me, who is your pastor? He said, my, my pastor is Pastor Ambrose. They said, from Parklands Baptist Church? They said, yes. He said, the interview is over. <laughs> the interview is over. The guy had already, was given a letter of appointment right there. Let me tell you this. Ambrose even though he's extraordinary, there is the most high God. And I'm telling you, if you connect to the most high God, who knows which doors are going to open for you? Who knows which doors are going to open for you? I am telling you, don't, 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 <clears throat> don't, don't be embarrassed to say where you're from. Oh, if I tell them I'm a Christian, they're going to tell me I don't need, to, they, they, they don't like Christians in the organization. Listen, the Bible says, I am the light of the world. When I enter a place, darkness leaves. Hallelujah. Darkness leaves. I'm the light of the world. When I enter a place, a place is favored, a flavored. Amen? Because I'm the salt of the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Know who you are. The presence of God is in our midst. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm an excited child of the king. I love Jesus. And Jesus loves me. And I pray that this same love will be your love. This same friendship will be your friendship. You will be a happy believer. I'm saying you'll be a joyful believer. You'll be a hilarious believer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the presence of God works with you. But I'm trying to finish my message quickly. I want to talk to you about his protection. <clears throat> when God comes your way. He protects you. Hallelujah. He comes with what is called the glorious engagement. He comes knowing that I'm here to protect you. I'm here to deliver you. He engages every situation you face. The Bible says no weapon that is fashioned against you will do what? Will prosper. Many of you are the ones engaging battles. 
And by the time you come on Sundays, you look totally finished. Because the whole week, you are the one engaged in battle. You are engaged in this. You are engaged in that. You are trying to sort this family issue. Then the next day, you are trying to sort out a, a job situation. The next thing, you are trying to sort out guys in the social media who have been spreading, spreading rumors about you. You are trying to do ABCD. You don't know what to do. By the time you come on Sunday, you are finished. You are saying, Jehovah God, renew me, renew me. So God renews you. On Monday, you are engaged. You are fighting this. You are doing that. Uh, all kinds of things. Let me tell you this. God wants to engage on your behalf. Hallelujah. God wants to engage on your behalf. Let me read these verses. It was a song that was sung by Miriam when they had crossed the Red Sea. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 15, a very interesting song they were singing. And this is what Miriam was saying about God. Let me start from verse 1 so that you can see that it was a song. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. <clears throat> Both horse and, dri and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. 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 He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. Look at verse 3. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sunk to the depths like a stone. Your right hand Lord was majestic in power. Your right hand Lord shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. Now this is what Pharaoh was saying. I will pursue. I will overtake them. Maybe this is what your enemy is saying. I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But God, you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. Tell your neighbor, that is my God. If you go back to that chapter, chapter 14, when the children of Israel were so scared, chapter 14, verse 13, this is what the Bible says. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Look at verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. He is your protector. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Look at the next verse. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry land. I will harden the heart of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, that was God's presence. He was traveling ahead of them, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. Verse 20. Coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel, throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side, can you imagine? And light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. And while that night was going, guess what was happening? Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. Let me tell you this. God is right now opening a way for you. Where there seem to be no way. Right now, while you're in the service, God is opening a way for you. 
By the time you walk out of this service, you'll be walking on dry land. You'll be walking on dry land. The Lord knows how to handle your situation. Let him engage the battles that you are in. The Bible says that the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their, on their right and on their left. But you know, the Egyptians foolishly did what? Pursued them. And all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, that's about four o'clock in the morning, the Lord, the Lord looked down from the pillar. Can you imagine? The, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into what? Into confusion. Guess what? He started playing games with them. Now, if you're a cartoonist, now think about this verse. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. Now, if you're driving something and you're going, Meh, and then you jam it, you just suddenly bing. What happens to the chariot? It flips. Can you imagine many chariots flipping? Bang, bang, bang. Huh? <clears throat> and the Egyptian said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against us. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord will protect you. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will protect you. Let his glory invade your situation. I am telling you, you have nothing to lose. God is fighting for you. That is why people in Paki, you can walk out of this church with confidence. Amen? Not with carelessness, but with confidence. Knowing that not only will his presence be with you, but his protection is with you. Remember, he is your friend. Number three, very quickly. Thirdly, I want to say this. Not only will his presence be with you, not only will his protection be with you, but God has a purpose. Tell your neighbor, he has a purpose. And God's purpose is to give you enlightenment. Glorious enlightenment. God wants to reveal to you who he is. He wants to give you his instructions. And that is why today we are hearing God's word. That's why you're being enlightened right now that God is your friend and you are his friend. Let me read Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 24. In that chapter, Mo, uh, Moses is reminding these people about the giving of the Ten Commandments and how it was given on Mount Sinai. By verse 24, he says this, And you, Israelites, said, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a person can live even if God does what? Speaks to them. But now, why should we die? These guys were so terrified. And they wanted Moses to go talk to God so that God's voice was too much. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us. And we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire as we have and survived. Go near Moses and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard what these people said to you. Everything they said was good. Now look at verse 29. This is now God's cry. This is God's desire. He says, oh, that their hearts will be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always. So that it might go well with them and their children forever. You see, God wants to share his purpose with us. And the Israelites were saying, God, please don't talk to us. Don't, don't talk to us. Please, please. Just talk to Moses. Let me tell you this. God does not want to speak through a speakerphone to reach you. God wants to be your friend and talk to you just where you are. He wants to reveal his will. He wants to reveal his purpose into your life. Look at Ephesians. This was Paul's prayer. Ephesians 1.17. The Bible says this. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. Look at the next verse. 
I pray that the eyes of your heart may be what? Enlightened. In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glory. God, not, not only has he given you hope, he has also given you his riches. Hallelujah. Can you, can you know, I, I, I meet a friend, and we, we become friends, and, and, and now he tells me, he gives me hope about the future, and we're just talking, and we're walking around, and then he tells me, by the way, Ambrose, you know, I, I have decided that all my riches are yours, and by the way, in, in my bank, hallelujah, I don't just have account in one bank, I have accounts in many banks, thank you, Jesus, and they're not accounts in Kenya shillings, they account, thank you, Jesus, in pounds and in dollars, hallelujah. And by the way, Ambrose, they are yours. Where would I have known all that if I hadn't had time to walk with him? He walks with me and talks with me along the narrow way. He walks with me and talks with me along the narrow way. Praise the Lord. You know, he lives. He lives inside me. He lives inside you. Let his glory invade your space. Let his glory invade your situation. He says, may, may your eyes be, be, be open so that you may be enlightened. Know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the holy people. And verse 19, and his incomparably great power. Hope, riches, and power. God wants your heart to be enlightened. So that you don't walk this planet. Yes, you're a child of the king, but you're walking around as a beggar. You're walking as a child of the king, but you're living in abject poverty. You're walking as a child of the king, but you're depressed. You're walking as a child of the king, but you're taking sleeping pills every night. That should not be. That should not be. You're quarreling all the time. You're complaining all the time. You're saying things never work out for me. I don't think I will live long after today. My friend, change your language. You're a child of the king. You are a child of the king. God loves you. Yes, you may not love yourself. People may not have loved you since you came onto this planet. But there's a God who is saying through Pastor Ambrose, for the first time in your life, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He's not come here to slap you into Australia. Hello. I forget Australia. Which is the best place to slap people? No, you shouldn't even slap people. God is not here to throw you away. He's here to embrace you. He's here to get you to himself. That's what Pastor Ambrose is trying to do as much as he's able to do in this, in this message. To tell you that today is your turning point. Today God is going to do a new thing in your life. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to open your heart. That's why we study the word of God. That's why the Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. Don't be like this guy who on his wedding day, his father was a very, very wealthy man. And so this boy was ex expecting an, a, an amazing gift on his wedding day. But on the wedding day, the father came with a small box, and in that box was a Bible. And he said, son, I love you very much. I wish I could give you my password for my bank accounts, but today I want to give you something better. And the father gave him a Bible. And the boy was so upset. He opened, he, wrapped, he unwrapped it, he looked at it, and he threw the Bible down. He says, what is this? Use a few four-letter words. <laughs> Threw the Bible on the floor. Told his, the bride, let's take off. And they took off. But the father picked the Bible, wrapped it up, and kept it for this boy. The boy went. They went for honeymoon. And for about two years, the boy never talked to the father. One day the boy was sitting in his house, feeling very, uh, very, very, very bad. They had quarreled with the wife. Something had gone wrong. And he's sitting in, in, in his bedroom and wondering, why is life so bad like this? 
And so he, he started pushing some things, and then he saw this paper, rough paper wrapped, and he saw the Bible the Father had given him. And he picked up that Bible. And he says, well, since I don't have anything to think about, let me think about what this crazy father of mine thinks about. Reads in the Bible all the time. Bible, Bible, Bible. So the guy opens the Bible, started reading. Read Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He read another verse, Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He kept reading, reading this Bible. But right in the middle of the Bible was an envelope with his name on it. And in that envelope, he opened it, and the father had written a statement. He said, son, I'm giving you my will ahead of time. My entire estate is yours. Enjoy your marriage. The boy cried. Not just for himself. The boy cried for the way he had spanned the father's love. And the boy got into his car, went to look for his dad. He found his dad in the sitting room and he says, he couldn't even talk. He says, dad, I don't know what came over me. But dad, I saw your note. But dad, beyond your note, I want to meet the God of that Bible. I want to meet the God of that Bible. If that God of that Bible can make you the kind of man you are, I want to be that kind of man. And the father was able to pray for him and bring him to salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, God is your friend. I'm saying God is your friend. You may, you may have everything in this, this world can offer, but remember, those are just resources. The source is waiting for you. That's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm about to pray for us. But I'd like us to stand briefly as I prepare to pray for you. May God's glory invade your situation. While you're standing, I want to finish with that last statement and read a verse and then pray. There are four things. His presence his protection, his purpose. And the last one is his power. His glorious enablement. God wants to enable you. There is his glorious environment. His glorious engagement. His glorious enlightenment. But I want to finish with a glorious enablement by just reading a verse. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says this. His divine power has given us some things. Hello? His divine power has given us everything. Tell your neighbor, you thought you had nothing. Tell your neighbor, from that verse, you have everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. His divine power has given us everything. We do what? We need. Why don't we read that together? Here we go. One to go. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse 4. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Go back to verse 3. Again, it says, just as a reminder, his divine power has given us everything. God has enabled you. Let me tell you this. Why should a person who knows these four things walk out of this place depressed? Hello? Why? The devil is a liar. I'm saying the devil is a liar. Somebody saying, but Ambrose, you don't know what I'm going through right now. In fact, Ambrose, you should have been with me yesterday. You should have been telling me these things yesterday. Because today, things are even 
magnanimous. Hello? But today, I am saying may God's glory invade your situation. Uh, he's invading your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just put your hands in front of you. Because God will invade your situation. God will invade your situation. Those of you in the pavilion, God is invading your situation. Those of you watching it online, God is invading your situation. Our God is a God who wants to give you a glorious environment. Huh? His presence. He wants to give you a glorious engagement. He wants to fight your battles. He wants to protect you. He wants to give you enlightenment, instruction from his word, his purpose. And he wants to give you enablement, divine enablement. God is your warrior. He is your fighter. But guess what? He's your friend. And that's what I want you to go home with. That God is your friend. <coughs> God is your friend. The people you meet, you become friends with them. You know, there some of you have been let down so many times. You don't want to, to befriend anybody again. But let me tell you this. I'm not asking you to befriend anybody else. I'm saying, be God's friend. Because get, guess what? Even if you don't become God's friend, he has already decided you are his friend. Hallelujah. You are his friend. And by the way, if you're God's friend, guess what? You're my friend. Hallelujah. <laughs> you're my friend. Huh? I'm not this person who is far away. You know, M-O-G, mighty man of God. From a distance, you can touch me and know I'm just as human as you are. Hallelujah. You can touch God and know he is spirit just as you are. Hallelujah. God is invading you. God is invading your situation. Father, invade your beloved ones. Be their friend. At the pavilion. I'm telling you, God is in that pavilion. God is in that pavilion. And not only in that pavilion, in terms of a place, sanctuary, pavilion, online. God is in your situation at home, at work, wherever you are. He is in your month. He is in your year. The Lord is in the house. Amen. God move in this sanctuary. Let your glory come. Let your glory come. Why don't you take a moment and just talk to God? Tell God, come. May your presence be with me. May your protection be mine. May your purpose be revealed to me. May your power enable me. Come on, talk to God. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Come on, talk to God. His presence is in the house. Oh, he's your friend. He's your friend. You are his friend. He has said you are my friend. You're my friend. You're my beloved children. He's your friend. Talk to him like a friend. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit is in the house. Holy Spirit, come. Talk to God. Holy Spirit, come. Invite him with your open arms. Tell him, come. Tell him, come. Come, Holy Spirit. God, come. You're free to come. Yes, last week, you came into his space. Today, he comes into your space. He walks with you. He will talk to you a long life's way. He's your friend. He's your friend. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your worries are being lifted up. Your anxiety is being broken apart. 
Yes, your fears are being driven out by the presence of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving you joy. God is giving you peace. God is going to engage your situation. God is going to engage. Don't stop fighting. Stop fighting. Let God fight for you. Let God fight for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Don't part in love of God. This is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. This God we are talking about is with us this coming week. It doesn't matter what will happen tomorrow on Monday. Our God has come into the city. Our God has come into our city. Trust in God. God is in your Monday. God is in your Tuesday. God is in your Wednesday. God is in your Thursday. God is in your Friday. God is in your Saturday. God is in your Sunday. You're coming back with a testimony. Now somebody better give God a big hand and tell God thank you. Come on, come on, somebody. If you really believe in God, if you are his friend, give him a big hand. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. You are God's friend. And if you're God's friend, you're my friend. Hallelujah. And there's nothing you can do about it. Hello. There's nothing you can do about it. Tell your neighbor, there's nothing you can do about it. Tell your, tell your neighbor, Ambrose is your friend. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm God's friend. And God is your friend. doesn't matter how dark your world is. The Bible says, arise and shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this word you placed upon my heart that I may deposit it in your sons and daughters. To remind them that in this month of divine invasion, that God's glory is invading them. So glory come. Glory come upon your people. Ancient gates lift up that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord God Almighty. He is the king of glory. Father, as your people prepare to leave, I want to pray for them that as they dedicate their lives here, and I know many of you have felt the presence of God. How many of you have felt the presence of God? How many of you, how many of you have been touched by God? I know you have been touched by God. May this God walk out with you. May this God touch the every situation you are facing. May you remember, Moses said, if you don't go with us, we will not go. So I believe that you will finish this year strong. I believe November will be one of the best months of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on somebody. Amen. Amen. So Father, thank you for your beloved people. Thank you for our children. Thank you for the holiday season. May your glory cover our children during this holiday season. May you cover us even when we enter into December, into a celebrative month. My God, may your glory even enter the prisons. Some of us have people in prison. May your glory enter that prison. 
and open those gates. May some of us have a court cases. May God enter into that court and become your friend in that court. Some of you have interviews. May God go ahead of you into that interview. Some of you have things, proposals you need to make. May God release his glory on that project, on that proposal. Some of you, maybe this is your month to get married or next month, and you're so worried about how will it happen. But I'm telling you, God's glory will come. This afternoon, God's glory is on the, on the launch of the album. Those things you plan to do, invite the glory of God. You will be amazed at the environment change that will take place. So Father, bless your people. And wherever you are, I want you to say, Father, I believe that your glory has risen upon me. This afternoon, I will walk in your glory. I will speak in your glory. I will pray in your glory. I will walk in your glory. I will seek to be friends in your glory. I will handle my situations in your glory. That you have never left me even when I have disappointed you. Because Father, you already said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So Father, thank you that your presence is mine. Your protection is mine. Your purpose is mine. Your power is mine. I receive it. I take it. It is my portion. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. Now why don't you give God one more big hand. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Amen. I want to pray for you. During this holiday season with our children at home, if they don't have this book, Youth Ablaze, make sure that it comes into their hands. And if you haven't read this booklet, it is in the bookshop. Please get a copy. The Lord will bless you amazingly. Are you glad you came today? Yes, sir. Are you glad? Yes, sir. What is happening next Saturday? Next Saturday? Women of? What is happening at three this, this day? Relax. Relax. Hallelujah. What is happening on Wednesday? Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? The summit. Hallelujah. Amen. Now stretch your hands. May, me, may I bless you. While your hands are still up there, why don't you give God one more big hand? Amen. Glory. Glory. Somebody say glory. Come on, come on, glory. Come on, better than that. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. And now may the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen. May the Lord be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Amen. May your week be full of God's glory. Amen. May that glory invade every area of your life. Amen. May you lift, be lifted up to the next level. Amen. You will never be the same. Some people will not recognize you. Yes. The glory of God is resting upon you. Yes. You're blessed to become a blessing. Yes. This week you have been blessed. Yes. Your Monday is blessed. Yes. Your Tuesday is blessed. Yes. Your Wednesday is blessed. Yes. Your Thursday is blessed. Yes. Your Friday is blessed. Yes. Your Saturday is blessed. Yes. Sunday is a testimony time. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom.